Today on Excellent Living, author and weight loss expert Shannon Tanner. God made food to solve one problem, and that problem is hunger. But we use it to solve all of our problems, and then we blame it for all of our problems. But if we're really honest, we ask ourselves one question. Am I hungry? Am I really hungry? And if I'm not, I need to learn how to delay my gratification, which is what true discipline is. Welcome to Excellent Living with Cheryl Martin a weekly program committed to inspiring you to make wise choices in every area of life, including why and how often you eat. Cheryl's guest today, Shannon Tanner, experienced much defeat, but now victory when it comes to losing weight and keeping it off. She lost 73 pounds more than 15 years ago and has successfully maintained her weight. Her answer? Shannon says, diets don't work, but Jesus does. That's also the title of her book. Now Shannon is on a mission to inspire others to live the best life God has for them. She tells Cheryl that means overcoming obesity and food addiction. I have to commend you for not regaining those 73 pounds. How do you do it? Well, I've had three children after the, the weight loss and gained a lot of weight with each one of them. But I think really it's about the relationship that I have with the Lord. And really when he revealed to me where food had become an idol in place of him, where I was taking my problems to food and giving food first place in my life, because it's so ingrained in me now to know that that's the counterfeit. Food is the counterfeit, but God is the real thing. So I've just learned to switch, you know, who I go to when I'm, I'm going through through life's challenges, it's no longer food, but it's the Lord. How does that work practically? I think in a practical sense, uh, a lot of people run to food and they use food as if someone would use alcohol or relationships or other things to numb the pain of life. And for me and for, you know, millions of other people in this country who are suffering, food is the quickest and easiest thing to kind of get our hands on to zone out, to check out, to temporarily medicate whatever it is that we're feeling, especially with the uh, incredible amount of stress that we're under right now. So for me, you know, in a practical sense, because I was not going to food anymore and I was really going to the Lord, the things that I was really hungry for on a spiritual level, those needs were being met where they needed to be met. So I would eat less. And most people who start to apply these principles are eating less because they're getting their most core needs met through the word and through their fellowship with God. Before we get to that process Tell me more about your story. Had you always struggled with obesity for as long as you could remember? I started really having an eating disorder when I was 14 years old. And that eating disorder um, would come from me gaining weight, losing weight, extreme dieting, um, really just having an issue with food. And it's interesting because when I went on my journey with the Lord and he began to reveal to me some of the inner weights, we talk about the inner weights create the outer weight um, through the book and also through the process that we teach in our workshops, that what you see on the outside, if you see heaviness on the outside, is really just a manifestation of what somebody feels on the inside. So I was 70 pounds heavier because I was heavy on the inside. And really my eating disorder started when my parents got divorced. And that was the very essence of my safety, of my stability in my life being ripped away from me. And so food became my comfort. It became something that wouldn't leave me. It became something where I knew how to, you know, manipulate and control the outcome. You know, a candy bar always tastes like a candy bar. So it was consistent. And it was something that I could use to kind of soothe whatever the pains were that I was feeling. So did you realize, though, you were grabbing food to numb that pain? Because I think a lot of people may say, well, I just love eating. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with pain, I just enjoy it. I think food and eating is a very enjoyable thing. And, you know, everybody, every culture loves to celebrate with food. And it's a very natural process. The problem with me is that I started to diet. And so not only did I have an eating disorder, but I thought that the way to solve it was through food manipulation. 
and, you know, eating less calories, eating smaller portions, putting all the focus on food never really helped me get to the root of my pain, which was driving that uncontrollable or urge for me to overeat. So I think dieting is really the worst approach that a person can take, especially a believer when it comes to healing a very real spiritual battle. Overeating is the Bible calls it fullness of food is, is gluttony, which is really dealt with on a spiritual level because it's a sin that we need to give to God so that he can begin to heal us and reveal to us where we've put it first place in our life instead of him. So you're saying scrap all the diet books. Absolutely. And, it, and when you look at the diet industry, it's a $46 billion industry that's built on failure. I mean, it's the only industry where the product is never really checked for consumer effectiveness. We start diets every year. 80 million people start a diet every Monday morning. And according to so many major publications, ma major scientific studies, you know, there are years and years and years of research and everybody's own personal story to back up the fact that diets don't work. But we keep doing it over and over again, expecting a different result. And as believers, you know, this is an issue. This is a battle that really takes place spiritually where we have to give it to God. But what about you mentioned you even have a problem with portion control? Most people would think that would be a good thing. You're showing moderation. I think really, though, when you're manipulating food through a diet, you're dealing with the lowest part of your nature, which is your flesh and your carnal self. Um, but when you say, you know what, Lord, my body is a temple. My body's not my own. It's yours. It was bought at a price. And then when you invite God into those those places of hurt, into those places of pain where you've used that food to kind of medicate and numb those places, then you allow God to really come in and fill you up where you're really hungry because he says, I'm the bread of life. Jesus talked about how the words that proceed from the mouth of God continue to feed him. So we're hungry, but we're really hungry for revelation. We're hungry for forgiveness, redemption. We're hungry for our purpose. There's so many things that we're hungry for. And we really shortchange it with the counterfeit of food. As far as portions, um, we believe that everybody when they were children kind of inadvertently got signed into this club called the Clean the Plate Society, you know, because there were children starving in Africa. And, you know, we eat in such excess and in such abundance in this country. And it absolutely has no effect. I mean, it does have an effect on people who are starving. It has, you know, the, the different, the adverse effect. But we've been taught that if we don't clean the plate, you know, we're wasteful. But to the exact opposite of that, God says that we're not supposed to eat in excess. That's where really the pain and the obesity comes from. So we do teach people how to eat just enough to where they're comfortably satisfied, not stuffed, but comfortably satisfied. And when you eat less, you weigh less. I mean, it's as simple as that. Carry us through how these principles work, because this is talking about a total renewal of the mind. Yes, that you go from, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I need to weigh my food, I need to check the calorie content. How does one switch from that to tapping into this being a spiritual problem where God can help me achieve the same results? Well, I think one of the, the easiest ways to switch into it is to recognize that we can't keep the law. We were never able to keep the law. Um, and dieting is based on a lot of rigid laws and restrictions. And yes, you know, we'll submit to them for a while. But typically, you know, anything that you tell somebody not to do, they want to do the opposite. God put a very survival based rebellious nature in us so that we would rebel against sin and rebel against the enemy. But w we will rebel against our diet plan. You know, if I say, hey, we're going to start a low carb diet on Monday for the next several days, all we'll do is eat carbs, you know, preparing to go to our <laughs> low carb prison. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to be locked up. I won't get any carbs for a while. And then we can maintain it for a little while. But the truth is, is that the way you lose weight is the way you have to keep it off. So if I lose all of my weight on a, you know, a low calorie soup diet, then that means for the rest of my life, that's how I have to maintain my weight loss. And that's not realistic. What we're talking to people about is letting God, trusting God with your weight, trusting God with a battle and admitting your weakness. You know, when I went to God to lose weight, I had worked for major weight loss centers. I was a national spokesperson for a weight loss center. I had, I knew all the books, read all the programs, knew it all, but I still couldn't get my eating under control. And so it was the knowledge had puffed me up, but I needed God's love to build me up. And when I went to him and I said, Lord, I'm weak. 
You know, this is an area in my life where I need you. It was like all of heaven opened up and said, yes, this is what I've been waiting on. I've just been waiting on you to admit the fact that you need me to humble yourself before my mighty hand and let me lift you back up. And that's exactly what happened. That's where I got my victory was in admitting my weakness. And that's the opposite of what the world teaches. And once you went to God in prayer, what did he begin to teach you? Well, it started with a fast. And I believe that every assignment has a birthing place. And for a lot of people in the Bible, that was through fasting. And so I really felt led by God. I literally lost my appetite when I went before the Lord. And it was 19 days of him just filling me up. And, you know, I was on juices and things like that. But I really lost my appetite because I heard so clearly from him when he spoke to me, diets don't work, but Jesus does. And that was the first revelation that I received from the Lord. I was on this crazy diet at the time jogging five miles a day, taking these pills that were making my heart race. And I literally fainted. I was coming back from a jog. I fell out and I heard, you know, this voice in my spirit just say, stop. And then I heard that statement, diets don't work, but Jesus does. And that 19 day fast really took me into the word scripture after scripture after scripture that began to reveal to me, you know, what the real root issue was. And God began to fill me up with his word. What were some of those scriptures? Some Well, the first one was first Corinthians six nineteen and 20, um, that my body was a temple and that, you know, I was bought at a price and that price was the ultimate obedience of Jesus. The second one really, and, and something that sticks with me every day to this day is that, um, you know, I'm not to be conformed to the world, but I'm to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And that's in Romans 12, when God says, you know, you're running after the world, you're doing what they're doing. They're all on a diet, they're hopping on the latest fad, but I have truth for you that lasts. There was also a scripture in the word, and I can't remember the exact address, but it spoke about how the wisdom of man is foolishness in God's sight. And I have been following man's wisdom. There's 26,000 different diets out there, and they all have a different approach to how they think you should eat. But God said, you know, man's wisdom is foolishness in my sight. I use the simple things and I confound the wise. And so when people say to me, how are all these people losing weight? Because we've had thousands of people lose weight by faith. And they say, how, 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 how? Well, when you walk by faith, you get the how out of here and you just recognize that it's really a step by step process of letting God renew you. Um, and then another scripture was John three and 30, where it says, Lord, you know, you increase and let me de decrease. And I realized that the bigger God could get in my life, the smaller I could get. And that was an awesome exchange to me. Lord, you get big and I get small. OK, <laughs> you know, because the bigger he would get, the smaller my problems would seem and everything else. And then in effect, because my my spirit was getting fatter, my body was getting leaner. You're listening to Excellent Living with Cheryl Martin, a weekly program designed to encourage women to do life God's way. To learn more about this broadcast, just log on to excellentliving.org. Cheryl's guest today is Shannon Tanner, author of the book, Diets Don't Work, But Jesus Does. It's been proven that most people who lose the weight don't keep it off. But Shannon has getting rid of 70 pounds 15 years ago and maintaining her ideal weight. Let's return to Cheryl's conversation with Shannon Tanner. How did you allow God to get bigger in your life? Really, um, you know, I've, I've heard David and read David say, magnify the Lord with me. And I never really understood that concept. But one of the ways I allowed God to get bigger in my life was to really, like the Bible says, walk in the spirit. Because when you walk in the spirit, it says that you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I really had a lust affair with food. Let's be honest. You know, I saw it and I wanted it. I smelled it and I wanted it. I thought about it and I wanted it. And I was really driven by my appetite and by that nature. Um, but when I began to walk in the spirit, I realized that, wow, you know, my provision is in God. I'm providing temporarily for myself, but he has something so much greater for me. You know, I also realized that when I walked in the spirit and, and began to really look at things from the perspective of God and his word, instead of my limited understanding, I would have so much more peace because the Bible does say, if you walk in the spirit it's joy, it's peace, it's life. But when you walk in the flesh it's you know, anxiety, it's fear, it's depression, it's destruction, you know, and those were all the things that I was walking in because because I was limiting my life to my own understanding. Shannon, can you give us 
a specific example, let's say you had had this addiction with food all these years, Mm -hmm. and as you're realizing that you need to be full of God, of, of Christ, give me an example, if you have one, of you're in the midst of that temptation of wanting to grab for food, and then how this concept helped. I want listeners to get a clear example, a practical example. If someone's been struggling with food for years, and yes, I've had my prayer time with God, and mm-hmm. I've meditated on Him, mm-hmm. but now I'm going to lunch with some girlfriends. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's the very real practical practical aspect of it it's like okay yes I've had prayer time this morning but I still want it you know I'm out here now very real in the circumstance and I think one of the biggest things that we challenge people to do is to be honest with themselves and if you can be honest you're answering one question throughout this whole process with us through our workshops through our books through everything that we teach which is am I really physically hungry Because if I'm not physically hungry, then that for me is a warning sign or a red flag that there's something else going on that I need to pay attention to. You know, animals use hunger as a basic needs of survival. That's why if you go to Africa or any, you know, jungle, you won't see an overweight lion or overweight giraffe. They're all the same weight because they only use food to survive. God made food to solve one problem, and that problem is hunger. But we use it to solve all of our problems and then we blame it for all of our problems. But if we're really honest, we ask ourselves one question. Am I hungry? Am I really hungry? And if I'm not, I need to learn how to delay my gratification, which is what true discipline is, is being able to say no to myself now so that when I say yes, I'm walking in truth and honesty and not doing something that's counterfeit. So it really is about answering that question. Am I really hungry? If I'm not, I have to learn like naturally thin people to say, you know what? I'm not hungry now. I'll have it later. That doesn't appear to be the American way because (laughs) it's a favorite pastime Mm -hmm. to go to new restaurants, to go for dinner. And we just enjoy the exercise of just eating. It's almost like a recreational sport. It is. So I'm not sure we even tell our children, even children are socialized to grab snacks, think about it. You may have just had dinner. You go to the movies. What are we told? Get popcorn. Mm-hmm. You, No one asks you, are you hungry? Right. It's just what we do. It's what we do. Or after church, in, in some areas, you go out to eat. Now, you may have just eaten, but it's the social thing to do. And I think a lot of people do it without really thinking. The food looks good. You enjoy the taste. And it's just what you do. And I think that there's nothing wrong with celebrating with food. It's I think it's biblical. I mean, if you look at the Bible, they would they would have certain seasons where they would feast, but they would also have seasons where they would fast. So there was a balance. And I think with us, we've lost the art of celebration as Christians. Um, if you look at the prodigal son, when he returned home, they killed the fattened calf. Well, we kill the fattened calf every day. <laughs> you know, that was supposed to be a celebration. When I was a child, you know, we had cake and ice cream because it was somebody's party. It was a birthday. We didn't have it every day. You know, we went out and had fast food when we got all A's on our report card. We didn't have it every day. And I think as a whole, we are using food more and more and more to meet other needs. Now, do I enjoy going out to dinner? Absolutely. But food always tastes better when you're really hungry for it. So you can plan, you know, to say, hey, I'm going out tonight for dinner. Let me save my hunger until then. I don't want to eat all day long knowing that tonight I'm going to have a wonderful celebration. There's times that I specifically when I know that I'm going out to eat, I purposely say I want to be good and hungry when I get there because I know then the food will taste better. I don't want to do anything. For example, we went out last weekend and we went to one of our favorite restaurants in California. We found out they had it here. My mom was in town and my mother bought some snacks before we got there. The restaurant said it was going to be a 90 minute wait. And I said, you know what? I don't want to eat the snack before we eat our food because that'll really take away the experience of that first bite of food because I want to really be hungry for it. And I was right. It was so much more enjoyable because I learned the discipline again of delaying my gratification. How difficult was it for you to learn that discipline? Um, I think it's a basic discipline in life. Um, I've had people tell me, you know, Shannon, since I've learned how to wait on hunger, I've learned how to wait on God for my purpose. Since I've learned 
excuse me, how to wait on hunger, I've learned how to wait on God for my soulmate, for my husband. You know, because I was not able to wait, it really spoke to a core need in me, which was I didn't trust God. I really didn't. I didn't trust him to take care of me. I didn't trust him to meet my needs. So I found a way to meet him on my own. And so I think if you can learn how to wait on the most basic thing like hunger, which is a survival thing in us, we feel very vulnerable when we're hungry. So I think if you can learn how to give that back to God, it will absolutely impact other areas in your in your life where you can learn how to delay your gratification there too. Are there any steps to learn how to wait for hunger? How does someone, if they have been grabbing at food for 20 years, how do they then turn that around and say, I'm going to wait for hunger today? Do they wake up that morning and say, We teach people and it is a process. I mean, when people go through our workshops, they're 12 weeks uh, and our likewise, our book diets don't work, but Jesus does is broken into 12 sections and there's a whole section. There's actually three sections on what we call natural eating. And one of the first section, one of the first principles in natural eating that people have to master is what we call recognizing true hunger, because there are so many other triggers that make us eat. So we have all these different triggers that cause us to want to eat from what we call appetite or false hunger. So yes, we do teach people these principles about how to start listening to their bodies like they did when they were children. My kids say to me, mommy, you know, I'm not hungry. I don't force them to eat. Um, Or they say, mommy, I can't eat anymore. I don't force them to clean their plate because I believe that's setting them up for a habit later on of gluttony. And I don't want that to be ingrained in them. I want them to trust their bodies. What do you teach women who are consumed with society's definition of a beautiful woman? And there are some women who go to the extreme and say, I must be a two, must be a four, must be a six, and I'm not going to stop until I get to that size because then I am an attractive woman. And once again, that's a distraction. You know, for years, I would strive to be a size eight. Now I'm a 10, 12, you know, and the thing is, is that there's a piece about that because I know exactly that's exactly where I'm supposed to be. But weight and food and and, and how much I weigh and what size I am can be a huge distraction from what is really hurting me. I mean, I live in California where size zero is the size to be. And there are beautiful women everywhere and there are people who are struggling everywhere. But the Bible says that a woman actually who fears the Lord and who loves the Lord is the woman who has true beauty. And so I don't think that it comes from the outside of us. I believe that it comes from the inside and it shows up on the outside. And I think even with our weight and even with our health, that is something that God wants to minister to us about. And even with Solomon, when he built the Old Testament temple, God gave him step by step by step by step directions on how to build that temple. So God will reveal to us through his word and by his spirit how to build our temples up. But a woman who's fixated on the whole Hollywood, I have to be a size this or a size that, once again, is yet another distraction from our healing. See, it's easier to obsess over weight and food than it is to really look at the real issues in my life. It's a nice little clever distraction, but it keeps me from really healing and living the kind of abundant life that God has for me. So when you are eating, you don't deny yourself anything. There isn't anything on the list that you say this is off limits. I do have foods that I don't eat. And the foods that I don't eat are really a personal conviction of mine. I have foods um, that don't set right with my body physically. We teach people a principle called wise eating. We don't give people a list of do's and don'ts. You know, don't eat this, don't eat that. We believe that there is such a wisdom in the way God designed our bodies. We're all biochemically different. We're all physically different. We all metabolize food differently. That's why you may be able to drink, you know, a cup of coffee and be up all night. I may drink it and go to sleep. And some people can't drink it at all. You know, we have to pay attention to the way our bodies respond to certain foods. So I've trained myself to really understand how my my body responds to certain foods, which ones benefit me and which ones don't. I believe that all food is permissible. The Bible says all food is clean. However, the Bible goes on to say that while all food is permissible, not all food is beneficial. So there are certain foods, yes, through a personal sense of conviction that I don't eat. 
Um, there are certain foods that don't agree with my body. So I have my own personal list of, hey, won't be eating that, won't be eating this. But because I have ownership over that and because it's something that I've given to God, I can walk in authority in that area instead of a list of food do's and don'ts telling me don't eat this, don't eat that. It's something that I own. And I think one of the first steps in healing is taking responsibility over our own eating. Thank you so much, Shannon Tanner, the author of Diets Don't Work, But Jesus Does. She's developed a program that's 100% diet-free, biblically-based weight loss, and a wellness lifestyle. Thanks so much for sharing your story and insights. That was Cheryl Martin with her guest this week on Excellent Living, Shannon Tanner, founder of Body Temple Wellness. She overcame obesity and food addiction more than 15 years ago, losing 73 pounds, and has kept her weight down. Shannon shares her journey and gives practical advice for losing the pounds in her book, Diets Don't Work, But Jesus Does. We're so glad you tuned in to Excellent Living today. You can sign up for our free quarterly online newsletter and get our updates when you visit our homepage at excellentliving.org. That's excellentliving.org. While there, you can browse our resources, all designed to empower you to become the person God created you to be. If you need prayer support in this season of your life, we're here for you. You can call our prayer line at 832-766-1695. That's 832-766-1695. This program is sustained by prayers and financial donations from friends and partners like you. We appreciate your tangible support. You can give online or send a tax-deductible gift of any amount to Excellent Living, Post Office Box 15285, that's P.O. Box 15285, Chevy Chase, Maryland, 20825. Thanks so much. We'd love for you to follow Excellent Living on Twitter, read Cheryl's blog on our website, and like us on Facebook. Join us again next time when our relationship coach, Dr. Johnny Parker, stops by for his monthly visit. I'm Doris McMillan, reminding you that excellent living is doing life God's way.